Hi, my name is Timo. My name is Louis. And we're the materials team of 3Devo. We come to you with another interesting video, which is a follow-up on the previous one, where we explain how to get started with the new material test. If you haven't watched that video, check the link in the description below, because there we go over the entire methodology on how to get started with the new material, uh, how to approach this in the best way, uh, how to prepare yourself and anything that revolves around it. So in this case, we're gonna apply the methodology on a high performance material, as I promised at the end of that video. In this case, it will be peak. So Louis, can you explain something about peak? Uh, of course, so peak is a high performance plastic, as you said. It is called a high performance plastic because it has outstanding properties, including a very good mechanical strength or resistance in general, as well as a very good uh, chemical and thermal resistance. For example, to give you an idea, uh, peak could be used continuously with a working temperature of 250 degrees Celsius approximately, which is very high. Mm. And in order to process peak and melt it, we will need to work at very high temperatures, around 400 degrees Celsius. So again, for a plastic, that's very high. In addition to this, uh, peak can be used for very specific applications, such as medical applications, for example. If you plan on printing peak, which is probably the case, you will face a challenge because it is a semi-crystalline plastic and in order to control the crystallinity of this plastic very well and keep good, uh, a good dimensional stability, you will need to control the temperature in your heated chamber on your printer very well and as well as the airflow inside that chamber. Here I have a spool of peak, as you can see it has a light uh, brown color to it. This appears when the peak solidifies and crystallizes, but in amorphous form or fully molten form, it has a dark uh, brown and translucent uh, a color to it. This is a generic peak in a nutshell. That's very impressive, Louis. I want to add one more thing to this because uh, not all polymers are the same. There are many grades of polymers. So one peak might not be the same as the other grade of peak. And this depends on the supplier, the material properties, and the applications and the processing grades. So you can divide it into injection molding grades, for example, which have a rather low viscosity, which means that they are more liquid and then they are easier to push through the mold uh, because they are so liquid. You have extrusion grades, which are suitable for extrusion because they have a higher viscosity and then they uh, retain in the extruded shape a bit easier, in this case, filament shape. For 3D printing, you need something in between because you want it to be flowing easily through the nozzle, so you have a high printing speed, but also viscous enough so it doesn't collapse after you printed it. So this is something to take into account and we got our hands on a general grade of peak, which in theory can be extruded as well as 3D printed. It's called PrimeTech 10G. So let's get started. I have the technical data sheet of the Peak PrimeTech 10G here and we're going to have a brief look at it before jumping into the, the extrusion test. Uh, we, what we can see on the sheet, and it's not always available, uh, is a typical thermal profile. So typical pr temperatures that you can use for injection and extrusion in that case in order to work and process your, uh, your, your plastic. But we want to find our own temperature profile. So, what we actually want uh, is the melting point of the plastic. In that case, 343 degrees Celsius. And keeping this in mind will allow us to melt all of the plastic in order to give it a new shape. And the second piece of information we need is the drying instructions. Peak being a hygroscopic plastic, it absorbs a certain amount of moisture inside its structure and not removing it will cause different kinds of problems such as bubbles present in the final products. So in order to avoid this, we're going to start by drying the plastic before putting it in the machine. And in that case, we see that we need to dry it for four hours at 150 degrees Celsius. So we'll do this with our arid dryer. You could also use another drying solution, another oven. Let's do it. So now we got some useful information from the technical data sheet. Now we can determine the starting point. First of all, I would like to mention that uh, getting a nice pool of peak, it can take some time to get the right settings for this. And before you can get the right settings of peak, you have to learn how the material should be processed on uh, this machine. So we got some information on the technical data sheet, but of course it behaves slightly different on this machine. So the first step 
is getting an output of this material. Based on that, we can form our next iteration step. We learn something new about the material and that way we start building our temperature profile. And at the end, we end up with quality settings for quality filament. So it's an iterative process. It can take some time and you have to take into account that uh, you're not heading into good results straight away. It's a learning curve, of course. So now we can determine a starting point for peak. As uh, my colleague Louis explained, there are some starting settings on uh, the technical data sheet of the material uh, for general extruders, but usually this doesn't apply to this machine. Uh, so that's why we have to determine our own settings. As we explained in the previous video, we look out for a flat baseline with all heaters 10 to 20% above the melting point to ensure a good flow of material and the material is completely molten when it comes out of the machine. Because then you have an output and you can base your next iteration step like I just mentioned. At the same time, we also have the screw speed and the fan cooling. And the screw speed, we put that on five RPM because good results can be achieved between two and eight RPM and five RPM is nicely in the middle. The maximum RPM of this machine is 15, but those speeds are uh, very difficult to handle for this machine to get good quality filament. So we stay between two and eight and five is in the middle. And the fan speed, we put that on 50% because that's also nicely in the middle. Okay, you might say, why not turn it completely off because we don't need it at this moment because we're not making filament straight away. We're just getting an output, right? Well, the heaters are controlled by a PID system. So it st stabilizes the temperatures of the heaters every time and it uh, learns from how much heat is lost and then it has to apply more heat and at one point uh, if you apply a lot more cooling on the nozzle it cools suddenly cools down and then the PID control gets a bit confused and it has to learn again and if you have the cooling uh, fan straight away then it can take that into the learning process straight away and that makes the process a lot smoother. So let's dial these settings in and then we can get started, right? So we dried the peak and now I can put all heaters at 400 degrees because that's 10 to 20% above the melting point and then we ensure sufficient flow, the RPM on five and the fan speed on 50%. Wait, because at the moment we have PLA running inside the machine. So uh -huh. if, we, if, we, if, we, if we dial in 400 degrees, by the time we get there, the PLA will be completely burnt. So we need transitioning materials. Okay, yeah, I've heard about those. I have uh, difficulty mid-temp and difficulty in high temp. Can you explain a bit more why do you need it? Yes, so as I said, if we bring the PLA up to 400 degrees, it will of course burn in the process before actually getting to these temperatures. So okay. we need transitioning uh, materials and we have these two indeed, DevoClean uh, mid-temp, DevoClean high temp. Uh, this one, the mid-temp has a thermal range of uh, 180 degrees up to 320 degrees Celsius and the high temp, the Vauclin high temp has a range from 280 degrees Celsius to 420 approximately. So to go from the PLA at 200 to the peak at 400, we will use a, a, two, a two fold transitioning process using this one first to push the PLA out of the machine around 200 degrees. Mm. Then we will heat up the machine to 300, push this one with this one and then heat up again to 400 degrees and finally push this one, the Devil Clean High Temp, with the peak. This way we will reach and go from 200 to 400 by pushing different plastics without burning any of them. Okay. So we'll do this. So that will probably take us a bit of time before we can actually get started with the peak, but it sounds like a good plan. It's true, and if you plan it and time it correctly, you can actually start the transitioning process during the drying time of the peak. And it takes approximately an hour, so if you time it correctly, you can start this process of a step-by-step -step transition and heating up uh, to make sure you can put your peak as soon as it's dry. All right, let's get started. Let's get started. But before we can get started, I want to do one more thing, and that is logging the experiment. Like I explained in a previous video, it's very useful to do this because this way you can keep track of all your data during the experiment and you can learn a lot from this data and you can see if the quality of your filament is actually good. 
and that way you can see if you're heading into the right direction. So let's connect our filament maker to our laptop. Like this. Yeah, I'm gonna start the Devovision app. And on the right corner of the screen, you should see it appear. Oh, it automatically opens, I see. I have to choose the right uh, serial, the right COM port, COM4, connect, log name, let's call it peak experiment. Okay, what happens now is the machine resets. Uh, this uh, is why we start the log before the experiment, because if the machine resets while you have peak inside the machine, you can have quite a big problem. So press OK. And done. And now the log has started running. So now I can restart the extrusion process. And that's it. And in the DevVision app here, you can see the temperature of heater number one but I'm mainly interested in the filament thickness, the RPM, the extruded current, and the, the puller speed. So as soon as we have some data, uh, you can see it real-time updating in the, in the graph.